all right you should do that before you commence each operation depending on your configuration of your setting operation setting okay all right so let's start let's start logic by activating here this is my bit 0, 0.0 i'm going to use 0, 0.0 here to activate it now the operation has started the conveyor is now running look at it if conveyor is running now like I told you, it's going to be moving on a circular uh, form. The conveyor will be moving round. Then this sensor is positioned on a stationary position. Okay? That monitors every item that passes by the conveyor. Any item being conveyed by the conveyor, the sensor will sense it and count it and register it into the counter, into this. So let me now activate this bit manually okay by clicking the bit look at the bit number here i 0 0.2 look at it here i'll be clicking it and be counting it once we count the value will be reducing once you get to zero this counter will shut down or oh, um conveyor all right we shut down conveyor and activate our counter our timer a timer is not activated yet until counter get energized okay uh, get the conveyor get energized so let's count that now let me count to now reduce to four just watch this value the sensor will be sensing what i'm clicking here is what sensor will be doing sensor will be sensing when it senses it will now send the solution to this place to reduce okay it reduce again it reduce again reduce again i'm sensing the bottle okay so the way i send the bottle is the way the reflection take on the counter counter now register it you go again and now shut down like i said when the five is completed it will now shut down this temporarily and activate timer so timer is fast so let's look at timer timer has completed let me change the timer to enable me show you around okay let's start again let's increase the timer to so that walk you through the logic let's increase timer to perhaps uh, let's say by 15 seconds All right Okay, so because I resetted, I need to load this again. Because I resetted, I need to load this value into the counter again by clicking the, the corresponding bit, which is um, M3. So it's loaded now. So let's go and start the operation again. Okay, once I activate the process, conveyor will come up. Lashing logic will be activated. Conveyor come up. And once conveyor come up, the counter will be ready, waiting for product to pass by. Once each product passes, counter start counting the number and registering them to the counter. The counter will hold them. Once it is completed, counter ask this to shut down and ask timer to come up. Timer will hold on so that the number of counted item will be executed or be evacuated from the um, conveyor before it will now initiate the um, conveyor to start operation again, to start moving those bottles again, so that we start counting another badge. Okay, all right, let's do that now. I want to initiate the process. I start it now. This is counting. It's a... Uh, Conveyor is moving. Look at conveyor moving. So let me now click here by counting bottles here. So let's count. I count one. I count two. I count three. I count again. It's zero. It now shut down. Counter has started counting. Let's quickly go to counter network. I mean timer. Look at timer counting. When the time elapsed, it will now come and reset this. Let's remain here and watch it reset it. 
Yes, it's now resetted. Timer has completed. So it now resetted and load the five again. You remember that the first time I loaded it using this bit, but now timer now loaded for me. So time counter now, this bit now, this particular um, sensor, we start counting again, starts counting product. Look at it, counting again, counting again. Once the time completed, it will shut down. Let me show the conveyor and the counter. Watch, conveyor has shut down. So timer is timing. Just hold on. Yes, the counter has now resetted. And once it's resetted, the conveyor come up again. Start conveying bottle. Then when this one sees the bottle, it start counting again. Let me count again. Look at it. Okay now shut down again all right so counter is counting so let's go to our indicator lamp my logic is on conveyor is off look at conveyor it's on now look at it so if the other one shut down those ones will also shut down with it okay so this is how we understand the logic okay so this is how to design a logic for conveyor and counter and timer logic it's just a simple logic okay so we can now shut down the system and uh, off our simulation okay now if you have a logic such as this normally when you are done you are now going to write a comment. Each of this network, the function of this network, to write the comment here. Each of this network, what is the function of this? You write the comment here. Okay. So when you are done, if you want to print this design, then you go to your project and print. I want us to print this page as a document. Print it as a PDF. Okay, yeah, come here and say yes, print it to my desktop. It will now print your program out for you. It's processing now. It's processing now. After that, okay, look at it. So, look at your program. Let me enlarge it more, put it to 100%. Okay, so this is your logic. This is your program. Network one, network two, and uh, oh, it's on two pages. Couldn't go to one page. This is our first network. Oh, I don't like the way this thing cut off my pages, so. You take my, you share them. Oh, oh no, no. If you go and print again, this is the page one. You didn't print well, okay? All right, but that is how to print your, should print from here. Yeah, this one should be first network and second network. All right, so we are done with writing our logic and then we have simulated it. So the next now, the next um, exercise is to shut down this. And uh, let's shut down this. Okay, leave it for reference. Let's go to our control. Okay. Now, this is um, a PLC. Now, after writing that program, the most essential aspect of automation is your ability to carry out your connection exercise. All right to carry out your connection exercise to your CPU, this PIC CPU. All right, come back here now. How many output do I have? I have one, two, three. Three, four, only, only four output. Only physical output that I have are four, only four. So what I need to terminate here now are just four. This is not the logic we just write. This is a different uh, 
design for a different logic. But I just want to use this place to illustrate um, to you. So now, if we want to terminate what we have just written to a live um, PLC, all you need is this start button and this stop button. Only these two are the input that we need for now. Then another one are the sensors. Sensor, I taught you, let me see if I have physical sensor here. I will show you the sensor. Come down normal. This sensor. This sensor. For instance, this is a sensor. Look at sensor here. Okay, so let me change the sensor to PNP or NPN. All right, so it's not visible enough. Take it to this area. Okay, for instance, if this is the sensor, okay, and you want to use this sensor to activate a relay, this particular relay, for instance. So you now need input. You have first of all energize this your relay, positive, negative. Should energize, should be energized from your supply, wherever your supply is coming from, DC supply. Then your input now that is going to your PLC is going to be this S. Okay, let me use another exercise to illustrate this. So let's go to um, let's go to uh, another control. Let's do another design using. I think I should have a, just hold on. I should have uh, okay. This another. This is not what we need to. This another connection founder. Let's uh, use another um, exercise to do this same design. This this particular program that we have here. I'm going to do this using control system using schematic. Okay, we're going to do this using schematic. We're going to design something like this. Look at it. What we are just look at what you have now. This logic you have here, this particular logic we just finished with conveyor and counter, is exactly what we have here now. It's exactly what we have here. It's a conveyor and sensor logic. But this one is why this is the reason why I say you should understand logic operation before you write a program. This one is very simple. This is more simpler than writing the other code. But they are the same thing exactly. But here is where you do the design. You do the design here and simulate here first. Before I now go to PLC here to write the program and download to PLC. Before you write, you don't, you don't, you don't experiment your logic with this place. You don't experiment it here. Because if you do that, you might get it right. But because you don't have physical connection of those components, okay, this one might simulate okay, but you may not get the physical structure to connect and see how it reacts. Let me come again. Let me explain again. Now that I have this timer, now that I have this relay here and I have the hardware component and I know how to terminate it to get this logic performed the way it's intended. Now, if you don't understand the work of this, how this one react to the contact and how this counter react to your logic, and you now write a PSC program using this timer, it may now it may write the program using a wrong timer. Okay, and it may be now decide to be changing different timer because we have a lot of timers as a software timers. We have a lot. Let me show you. Just come back here. Take a look at these timers. Look at timer. Now click here now. Look at lineup of timers. And they are different functions. If you don't understand these timers, each of them perform different configuration. Okay? If you use another one wrongly, you have different result in this logic. So how do you understand this timer first before using the software to understand the termination? It's by using this software. Sorry, um, using this other 
using this logic. So with this logic, you can now have the physical structure of this timer and they understand the functionalities and uh, the uh, uh, configurations. Okay, then having done that, you now go to automation software and now write the program and use the appropriate conditions. If you don't use the appropriate conditions and instructions writing your PSC program, PSC will be simulating and give you perfect um, uh, testing process. But when you now download to your PLC, now carrying out the connection to your hardware uh, field uh, devices, you will have any issues until you come here to rectify, make some changes. Okay. In some cases, where it's required to use NC, you now went and use NO for the counter. The logic will behave differently until you revise the use of the contact on that logic before the logic will work perfectly. So for you to familiarize yourself with the right contact to use is for you to now come to a design, a design process. You must know how to design. Knowing how to design entails understanding the component configurations and the functions of the symbols. Okay, all right. So if that is taken, the next exercise is to now design this. All right. Okay. Um, let's go now and uh, carry out that design. Let me um, open another page. Uh, let's open another page. Let's say new. Okay. So take this one up. Okay, just hold on, let me resize. All right, now this is our program. Let's finish it before we now go to the control uh, software to write schematic with that same, this is what we have. So we are going to convert this ladder logic, this program that we just did now, we're going to convert it to schematic. Remember the process in which we finish the whole of this program. We first of all started with this lashing logic they will now come to network two and put our counter um, device and our counting sensor. After that, we now went to a timer network to put a timer. Then lastly, we now inserted this other um, counter to count the total number of the product to capture the whole of the production, okay? So this is what we have. So now we are going to go to control um, software and convert this particular logic back to schematic and simulate it in schematic. Now, the difference between schematic and this is because schematic, we're going to use physical components to simulate. We're going to work with physical component relays, contactors, and contacts, and uh, sensors, and also counter. We're going to use the whole of this. Their physical structure is going to be used on that uh, logic. That is going to be schematic. I should I teach different between schematic and ladder logic here. If you check my page, you see a lot of drawings where I keep I put the comparisons. I put the both of them. I show you how to reconcile schematic and ladder logic. It's all about contact. Understand contact movement, contact structure, contact function, contact configuration, and the counter sensor and so on understand their movement and their configuration and their function okay and their application so we're going to do that let's go to our uh, software control software okay all right thank you for better understanding like i said before you should like this video also comment and also share so that subsequent edition will come to you because it's going to be a continuation of uh, uh, a, um, a continuation of uh, exercise like this one I just finished now. We're going to continue with uh, control logic, control schematic. Remember, so if you don't like and if you don't share and uh, you don't, you're not aware about this particular one, you now get to see the logic design instead of uh, starting from the beginning. 
So that is the essence of the advantage of liking or share or comment because Facebook will not send the part two or part three to you if you don't like. You will now send to those of them that uh, indicated interest on that particular video. That is how Facebook operates, including other social media. When you like, that is indication to show the media that I'm interested in this particular video. So a continuation will be sent to you or a similar related video will also send to you. Okay. All right. Thank you.